No, I didn't know my rights because I was young and I was more living in fear. I just didn't really want, I just wanted the situation to end. So I didn't, I didn't really think. I just really did what they wanted me to do. There's like, there's something that has happened in this area that you guys meet the damn description. Stop and search, one of the most controversial police powers. The internet is full of viral videos, films of stop and searches that went badly wrong. I feel like whatever they say will run because they're just in the authority. I should have known my rights. You know, I feel like now when I look back, there's a lot of instances maybe I shouldn't have been stopped, but you just always kind of let it be, innit? My name is Aaron Roach Bridgman. I'm a documentary maker. In my life, I've been stopped and searched more times than I can even remember. In this film, I'll be taking a proper look at what stop and search is. In August last year, police were called to Northwest London after a woman was assaulted by a group of men. It's going all right. Police, yeah? Put your hands out there. Put your hands out there. We've got a call to him about people being attacked, alright? Okay, we've had a call to here. So you can leave weapons. Yeah, we've got a call to him. Don't, hey, 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 do not fight! Do not fight! Hey, 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 Stop! Get off me! Get back! 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 Get at this point, police say Jamal attacked a police officer. We've looked at body cam footage and you don't see any attack. But Jamal was later convicted of assaulting a police officer. He has to wear a tag now. Like, I know it must be uncomfortable. Explain to me what happened on that day. I was on my way out, it was Friday night. It's the Friday before carnival, obviously the weather, very bad loss here. Yeah. I was standing under shelter. Don't like to be questioned, they don't like to be challenged. And obviously, me doing that, I got a handcuff across my cheek and nearly lost my eye. You come here to set for weapons. The police say they analysed footage from other body cams, which we haven't seen. Jamal appealed his conviction, but it was denied. Then he complained to the Metropolitan Police and the Independent Office for Police Conduct. Both times he was told the police had behaved properly. So there might be someone who would say something to you like, if you were maybe just kind of like, stayed calm during the time that they were having you up, then maybe this wouldn't have got to the stage it got to. What would you say to that person? Yeah, that's what the judge said on my appeal actually. She said if I had given the officer four minutes to conduct his search, that that would have all been avoided. I was respectful, I told him my address, that I was waiting for the room to stop. I gave an account of myself. So I had shown that essentially I was complying when the ID wasn't provided, the name of the station wasn't mentioned, the legal power that you're using wasn't mentioned, and you're trying to handcuff me and oppress me outside my house. The police told us, on occasions, officers need to use proportionate force to achieve their lawful objectives. When this is carried out in an appropriate way, they will be fully supported. A very important point in your whole story is that if you were left alone on that day, you wouldn't have had something added to your criminal record because nothing was found on you. That must feel pretty frustrating. Oh, it's definitely frustrating because I don't feel like I was a person of interest. I wasn't a person of interest, mm. but I was made a person of interest based on how I was dressed and me standing on the shelter at my address and basically made the task of bettering myself a lot more difficult, yeah. But thank you for taking your time to speak to me as well. I appreciate it, bro. Yeah, good luck as well. Meeting Jamal for me was very insightful. I feel like I learned a lot from speaking to him, but I also gained a lot of questions from speaking to him as well. And I think, what are our rights? And what happens to those who don't have as much knowledge as Jamal with their rights? And I think the third thing is, 
how should the police be treating us? And I feel like there's so much more information for me to gain on this. So the journey's just started. I went out with the Metropolitan Police Stop and Search team because I wanted to see it up close and personal. I have to admit, I was apprehensive because of my own experiences. Yeah. Very strange riding around in this area with a hoover pole tucked down the trousers. Yeah, so literally been in the car with the officer for about maybe five minutes and already we have stopped and searched somebody on the roadside. Um, they had suspicion that maybe it would be worth stopping him to see what he had on him and they found a hoover pole in his, um, in his pocket, in his jacket. And because of that, they're searching him further to find out what else he could have on him and also to find out why did he have this on him in the first place. Basically, we've seen a gentleman cycling down on the pavement. We get quite a lot of robberies around here. Okay. A lot of it is uh, push bike enabled. Okay. Basically, we've put the stop in on gentleman. He's cycling on the pavement as well, which is an offence. Yeah. We had a chat with a gentleman. He's been searched. Why he's being searched on the section one of pace? Okay. He said something along the lines of, "I've got something on me." Yeah. The officers have felt a sort of pole in and around his groin area. He's been searched, and they've taken out a pole about this long. And, and I can see you've got the police van here now as well. So is he, is he going to the station right, right now? Yeah, it enables us to transport him and the bike back to the police station. I'm right, yeah, so they stopped a young man over here, you can see, giving him a search. The young man is very, very calm. So right now it's going pretty smooth. I'm going to find out the grounds for which they thought he was um, suspicious. All right, so we saw that um, you, you guys kind of like saw these two young men here. Um, what was the reason for why you felt like they um, were suspicious enough to be, to be searched? So initially I was just going to drive past, maybe wind the wind down, have a chat with them. But on this occasion, the two gentlemen were smoking cannabis. OK. Um, obviously, you know, cannabis is still illegal, despite uh, some people's belief in it. <laughs> but obviously a lot of... So we searched the two gentlemen under Section 23 of Misuse of Drugs Act. So you said Section 23 of the Drug Misuse Act? Uh, yeah, Section 23 of the Misuse of Drugs Act. Yeah. Basically, that gives a police officer the power to search a person if, they, if we suspect that they have drugs about their persons or we've seen them taking drugs. But that is also a search power that we try to utilise in sort of combating knife crime, because as I said previously, drugs does go hand in hand with knife crime and gang violence. So all the stops I watched went to plan and police were calm. It was good to see, but I know it doesn't always go that way. I made my way to Leicester to speak to Amal, who runs workshops all around England about stop and search. We're gonna do some role play. You're going to be the person who is being searched. You're going to be the officer. So you're going to search him for drugs. So you are going to search him for cannabis under the Drugs Misuse Act. All right, mate. Hey, stay, right, stay, stay right here. Uh, what's your name, mate? I'm in this local area, and I've heard that there is somebody with a jacket like yours that has been selling cannabis around this area. So I need okay. to stop you and find out if it's you by having a little simple stop and search. So I don't necessarily need to be here. And who told you that? Uh, because I know my rights, I think. This guy knows his rights. Got to let him go, all right? Have a good day. <laughs> oh, um, your pockets, please. Yeah. What's in here? Hmm. So what was really interesting as well is I didn't give... Um, I didn't tell you as the officer how to act, OK? And I didn't tell Aaron how to act as the officer. But you both... Especially you, Aaron, you went in very, you went in very hostile, all guns blazing. Just based on previous experience. Based yeah. on previous yeah, experience. Yeah, yeah. And this is the perception that you have of yeah. the police. Amal works for a charity who have created the Why Stop app, specifically designed to record stop and searches and then send them to Why Stop's database. It's a response to frequent complaints of officers destroying phones or going into phones and deleting footage. And you're now filming the interaction. If you think the situation is getting hostile or you're worried, if you shake your phone, it says preparing video for upload, please wait. And then it will go to a secure dashboard that I have access to. Yeah, and then following on from this, you fill out an incident report form and then you can, I can put you in contact with specialist lawyers who deal with action against the police. What we're trying to do is make sure that people feel it's safe and there's a, a synchronised way of making complaints and there are people there in their corner fighting their corner as I well. I think it's amazing. What do you say to someone who tells you they tried to film the police but the police told them they refuse to be filmed um, in a stop and search. Uh, what can we tell that person? If an officer tells you that you are obstructing the search, so you're stopping them from doing their job, um, then you need to make sure your phone is at a safe distance. 
as a community, we should be looking out for our young people. I, I've been getting my head around the whole sections, the section one, the section 60. Um, so what constitutes a section one? So with the section one uh, of the Police and Criminal Evidence Act, which is PACE, PACE codes, yeah. in terms of grounds, so they can say that you match the description, um, it has to somewhat be intelligence-led, they have to have information. Things that are not grounds are things such as your race, your age, yeah. um, what you're wearing. Um, but very often we see that it's young black men um, who are in hoodies um, who are stopped and searched at a higher rate. Um, and I think the media has a large part to play in this in sensationalising and criminalising um, young black men to be seen as, you know, something to be feared um, and it's racial profiling. Why is it so important for you to stay calm during a stop and search? If you are not calm um, during a stop and search, it can impact where that stop and search goes. So if it could potentially escalate, um, and officers, if they feel that you are a threat to them, mm. yourself, or to members of the public, or if they think that you're gonna escape, try and escape, then they can put you in handcuffs. I'm gonna then flip this back on you. Yeah, go on. You is go it ahead, calm? Go ahead, is yeah. it is it easy to stay calm during a stop no, and search? And that's, what, and, and, that's, and that's what I was gonna say to you. Because what I was gonna say is, what is expected of us is to stay calm, mm -hmm. allow the police to do what they are doing, and then come back later to complain if we feel like something has been done wrong, which is very difficult from a very human and human emotion perspective. Of course, of course. I think our main priority is getting people out of that situation as quickly and as safely as possible. And later on we'll complain, right? Nothing is going to change if a complaint isn't made. You'll sit back and yeah. say, what's the point? Um, then nothing's going to be done. So thank you so thank much. Thank you for coming. Yes, you're welcome. Thank Thanks. you for having me, man. Awesome. Yes. Great. I feel like today um, a lot of people came here today and were empowered as they left with knowledge of how to deal with the police, especially in a stop and search situation. I also learned today the impact and importance of complaints. But what's a hard and bitter pill for me to swallow is that it feels like I'm expected to just stay calm and accept whatever treatment happens to me from an officer. And if I feel like it's unjust, I go and seek justice or action after. But there's a lot that I learned today and a lot to take away. I'm in Birmingham to find out about Section 60, a controversial police power. Section 60 was trialled in seven counties across the UK and then extended to all 43 forces over the summer. But West Midlands Police have made amendments to the power and how it should be used. Yeah. And that's the, um, the neighbourhoods on the... On the yeah, um... so these are all the areas of the West Midlands. And one of the things that I'm on a journey of understanding and getting more information about is Section 60. Mm. What is Section 60? Section 60 is a policing power that allows the police to stop members of the public without reasonable grounds. It's a very controversial power, it's a very antagonistic power in some respects, but it's a power that the police use if they feel as if there's a high uh, opportunity for young people, any people, to commit violent crime in an area. And how much were you involved, I guess, in the, in the choice to adopt the Section 60? Now, recently, the Home Office um, have said that Section 60 can be authorised by someone who's lower than an assistant chief constable, whether it be a superintendent or someone of that rank. We have said Section 60 can only be authorised by an assistant chief constable because for us it demonstrates just how importantly we're taking this power, just how importantly we, we recognise they can have a negative effect on our communities. Uh, in your opinion, why do you think people do not like Section 60? No, I'm a young man from Birmingham, in the city of Birmingham, and I've been stopped and searched on a number of occasions. I've been uh, stopped and searched in a manner which hasn't been productive and has left me feeling humiliated and embarrassed. So if I know what it feels like to be stopped and searched, I know other people who share the same characteristics I have also know what it feels like. So we have to make sure that we oversee the power, we make sure that when it's used, it's used in a way which is fair, effective, and that communities can understand why we're using it to protect them and their, their communities. There, there might be some people who analyse the statistics and they might say there's only 2% um, of uh, fines of knives or drugs out of stop and searches. Um, that looks very much like an unsuccessful rate. So if stop and search statistically is, is, is so unsuccessful, why should we still use it? It's a fine line because 
you can say that, that there's a low uh, rate when it comes to finding weapons on people, but you know, one person being stabbed or one person being shot is one person too many. Thank you so much for giving me a bit more clarity and also more information about what you're doing and how this whole thing works from an internal perspective. I do appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you, much. I appreciate Pleasure. it. I'm blocked by a lot of police accounts. My own local police, Lucian, have got me blocked. You know, the last thing that the Met needs is probably another, another white male commissioner. Adam Pugh is an ex-Met special constable and an outspoken critic of Stop and Search. Adam, what's going on? Aaron, nice to meet you. How are you? You good? Why is it mainly young black males who are stopped and searched? For a lot of police officers, specifically when it comes to young black men, they see them as other. So, and because they're not from London or they're not from wherever, yeah. they don't see them as, that could be my neighbour or my nephew or my niece yeah. or whoever, there's, there's yeah, yeah. that disconnect there. Yeah. This feeling is that if I stop you, it doesn't matter who you are, but, but if you're a young black male and I stop you, you should do what I'm telling you to do okay. because I'm a police officer. Yeah, like I'm yeah. automatically I've deserving of your respect. That's yeah. exactly what I used to so, do. Yeah, yeah. So when, you, when that's met with any form of resistance, forget about the fact that you might have been stopped 10 times that yeah. week. Yeah, or you might have had a lot of negative experiences up until then, and it's not personal, but I mean, based on your experience, you're just you're frustrated or whatever yeah, it is. If there's any form of resistance, that then I mean that 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 hits their ego, and it just becomes this it just becomes this this kind of contest. Adam, do you ever see a betterment for the relationship between police and communities? Could that ever happen in the future? I'd like to be optimistic and say yes but the, the way things are at the moment and the current trajectory, no, I, I, can't, I can't see things improving. And it's not gonna take these little, these little PR stunts, um, you know, twerking police officers are not in a carnival. Uh, that's not what we need. We need real, real, meaningful, um, real meaningful solutions. You know, I, I know that there's this drive to have more um, people of color in the police and that's important, but that's, that isn't gonna solve it. And um, there's a lot of work to be done and that's gonna take a, a long period of time to, to build that trust. And yeah, man, thank you for giving me your time, man. I appreciate that, brother. When I started this, I couldn't see a way where stop and search could be unproblematic. Now, I still see stop and search full of issues and problems, but I've learned how to manoeuvre it by staying calm and knowing our rights. Now, this isn't always going to be easily achieved, especially when you consider how tense and highly emotional these interactions can be. But even in my own life, as I've got older, I've realised it's become smoother for me in these procedures and dealing with the police by me not allowing it to get to me. So yes, the police definitely need to have a revised approach, but we too need to also carefully consider a calmer reaction in these situations. This is the way that we can seek proper justice by complaining and having follow-on action if anything unlawful does happen to us.